I love when my job lets me talk about prey mantis people. This episode is going to be fun. Thrykreens are practically the poster child of beloved settings like Spelljammer and Dark Sun, and it's exciting to see these bugs skitter their way into 5th edition. One of the most alien creatures that players have had the privilege to play, no doubt, Thrykreens are essentially praying mantis people. They're big insects with sentient intellect driven by heightened survival instincts. But what exactly makes them fun to play now that they've reached 5e? Well, we're going to go over everything about them in today's episode. To make a Thrykreen, you basically have to take a praying mantis, size it up, and give it humanoid intelligence and telepathy. They have an insectoid exoskeleton that changes color for camouflage, an antenna, weird little bug mouth parts, the, the whole deal. You also get an extra set of arms, with big praying mantis claws on the bigger set of arms. Said mouth parts can't really be used for speech either, and they communicate with wiggles of their antennas and the substantial telepathic abilities they've been blessed with. They believe in survival of the fittest and are solitary most of the time, at least, making it odd for them to team up with groups, so you should probably come up with a good role-playing reason for why they are in the first place. I expect that this aspect will be downplayed once we get the full 5th edition lore, but we'll see what happens. Just like all the other newly released races, the Thrykreen are a lineage rather than a race. This means that the ability score increases are up to you, and the selection is all about the features. Thrykreens have a lot going on with their features too, so let's go through all of these and just analyze what we're dealing with. Starting with your creature type, you are a monstrosity, which is pretty relevant because there are a lot of spells and abilities that only target humanoid creatures. Hold Person and Charm Person are common examples of this, and your big mantis can really just shrug them all off. As for your size, once again we get to choose between small or medium with the Thrykreen, which seems to be the regular thing with the new lineages. This is doubly strange as I haven't found any small Thrykreen in the old edition lore, but maybe they just want to go another way with it or something. Mechanically, there's not a whole lot of difference between small and medium, so you can really just go with whatever feels best from a flavor perspective. The exception is heavy weapons if you plan on swinging something big or if you'll need to be a bigger bug. A Again, for flavor reasons. When it comes to speed, your base walking speed is 30 feet, which is nothing unique. However, their chameleon carapace is both something unique and something that I imagine a lot of people will be picking this lineage for. Here we get two big features sandwiched into one, both representing your color-shifting exoskeleton. The first half is a dexterity-based natural armor with a baseline of 13, just like the lizard folk. 13 plus dexterity produces a solid AC, particularly for classes that don't normally get armor. The second half is the chameleon part, which is a tad vaguer since it doesn't quantify surroundings. The strictest interpretation would force you to use an action every time you move since you'd be in new surroundings, technically. The looser interpretation would give you the benefit of advantage on stealth rolls as long as you remain in similar surroundings, like while in the woods or in a certain room inside, etc. How your DM rules this varies its strength a ton, since it's the difference between basically permanent advantage on stealth checks to only a static bonus when you specifically have time to hide. And I can see merit to both sides of this. Now they do have dark vision, which any D&D veteran will tell you is far from a rare ability, but always a welcomed one. But I'm sure a lot of you heard me say this earlier and want me to elaborate on those secondary arms. Yes, you have two slightly smaller secondary arms below your primary pair of arms. The secondary arms function like your primary arms with these exceptions. Note that this does nothing with your actions, so you're still limited on your attacks and other things by your action and bonus action. They also smartly limited your extra hands to light weapons, and you can't use them for shields. All that said, I don't think they were quite careful enough here, and there's still ample room to make use of all your hands. The first glaring issue is that while it restricts you from using your secondary hands to hold shields, you can still totally use your primary hands for a shield. This means a Thrykreen can wield two light weapons and a shield, something practically no other race can manage. Next, the feature is very specific about weapons and shields, but it seems to give you utility for just about everything else. This means you can do things like grapple with them while still holding weapons, use a spell casting focus or a wand while still holding weapons, or you could even keep a couple healing potions at the ready in your little hands. And now moving on to Sleepless Revitalization. Here we get what is possibly the strongest version of the alternate rest feature we've seen so far. While you do still require the full 8 hours, you are fully conscious and aware the entire time. Thrykreens are the ultimate watch captains, and you'll be pulling first, second, and most likely third watch shift every night. Which to me is a great way of establishing their otherworldly nature that also opens up a ton of cool roleplaying opportunities. 
And then we have Thrycrene Telepathy. We've seen half measure telepathy features before, but this is a full fledged telepathy that you'll essentially be using constantly instead of talking. And talking is a point of contention here because the lore makes it seem like Thrycreens can't talk using their insect mouth parts and instead rely on their telepathy brain parts. As it stands now, before any likely changes are made, this telepathy lets you have silent conversations with all of your friends within range for free. And I mean, it's an 120 foot range. You should be fine if not in possession of some sort of great advantage in most situations. As I've mentioned with the other lineages, there's no more ability score matching now, and so there's really no ideal classes for them anymore. Kind of. The Thrycreen have a lot of features that really push them into particular strategies. Firstly, since the Thrycreen gain a natural armor save based off of their dexterity, classes that focus on dexterity already that don't gain access to medium armors or other alternate AC can make great use of it. Bards, rogues, sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards are all great fits for this reason. With their extra arms giving them an access to dual light weapons and a shield, fighters and rangers focused on dual wielding are also excellent fits. Out of everything though, I feel that rogues are perhaps the best option for Thrycreen due to their telepathy and camouflage abilities working perfectly for any missions where stealth is essential. And good lord, I can't think of anything more terrifying than a stealthy giant praying mantis. That's a lie, I can think of a few things more terrifying, but it's still terrifying. I mean, I have my thoughts on the Thrycreen and giant sci-fi fantasy praying mantis people, but chances are, if anything in that vague description appealed to you, nothing I could say here would really change your mind, or I just assume that if you are interested in the Thrycreen, you're going to be doing it. I have a sinking feeling that my whole D&D table is going to want to play a giant party of Thrycreen now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new videos like this every week. And if you plan on building a Thrycreen character, I would love to hear about them down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell.